Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's do a little better than that. This is our first year anniversary. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We made it a year. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah, let's, let's, let's give God some praise for being here because we're sure honored to be here in the house of the Lord after one year. Didn't know and, and coming from, from nothing to something. But do we don't take all the credit for that. We give God all the credit and we honor him. Honor him. For doing that and give us an opportunity to come this morning. So let's try this again. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Everybody. There we go. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. So we thank you all for coming here today. And, and so it's not only Happy Father's Day, it's, it's, it's Juneteenth. Happy Father's Day and our first anniversary. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank you, Lord, for all of that. Amen. I tell you what I want to do. If you have your Bibles, Please, if we can open up, if we can open up with our service, everyone have your Bibles, and it is D. Click on there for me real quick, on, on the mouse for me real quick, quick. There you go. Did you click? What you want to click on? Click on this on the mouse. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, D. Right well. Did that thing. <laughs> Did it get it? It got it. All right. So if you have your Bibles, please and stand if you can as we do our call to worship. And this is going to be about a father's love, about a father's love, being that it's Father's Day. If you have your, your Bibles, go to the um, Luke chapter 8. We're going to read verses 40 through 42 and then 49 to 56, 49 to 56. All right. Is everyone there? I need to get there too. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. So good to be in the house of the Lord. And it is a little different this morning because everyone's used to Psalms. It's still in the same place, though, that it was last week. Everybody there? Say amen. 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 And I'll be reading from, from the New King James Version of the Bible. Starting in verse 40. Luke chapter 8, verse 40. So it was, when Jesus returned, the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. So they were all waiting for Jesus. For verse 41, and behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. Verse 42, for, verse 42, for he, Mr. Turn had only an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. So his daughter was dying, only 12 years old. Dropping down to verse 49. While he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. Verse 50. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Do not be afraid. Only believe, and she will be made well. Let's all read verse 50 together. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Do not be afraid. Only believe, and she will be made well. 
when he came into the house, he permitted only no one to go in, book to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the girl. Now all wept and mourned for her. But he said, Do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. <clears throat> but he put them all outside, took her by the hand, and called, saying, Little girl, arise. <clears throat> Excuse me. That her spirit returned, and she arose immediately. And he commanded that she be given something to eat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them not to tell no one what had happened. It's through his father's faith and love that his, do that his, that his daughter was healed. And we just had that message today for Father's Day. So we just thank God for the hearing and reading of his holy word. So let's go to the throne of grace. Precious Father, mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all the honor and praise, Heavenly Father for being who you are, just being so gracious to us, Heavenly Father. For you are just so awesome to allow this church of Helping Hand Ministries Christian Fellowship to be here for a year, Heavenly Father. We do not take that for granted, but not only this year, but for many more. We thank you for all the members, Heavenly Father, all our, our business and friends and families who are here today, Heavenly Father, to celebrate this occasion, Heavenly Father. But the celebration is secondary to worship in you, Heavenly Father. Because we're here to worship you. You've done so much for every one of us, Heavenly Father. And we are, we are truly believing you're going to do even more. Just like the Centurion had hope and had the faith, we continue to have the hope and have the faith that you're going to do what you do for us. Because you love us and you will not leave us nor forsake us, Heavenly Father. So we thank you, dear God, for being a part of this ministry, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you so much. All we can say is hallelujah. Let's say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for just being so honorable, Heavenly Father. To all the sweat and everything that's gone into being here, we think it's only an extension of your hand. It's nobody like you, Lord. You thank you, Lord, give us the health and strength to even do that. But everyone who's here, give them health and strength, Heavenly Father, for you just so awesome. Thank you, dear God, for what you've done for my wife, Heavenly Father. Just so I thank you for what you've done for Brother Jeremiah, Heavenly Father, for all that you that was done, that you have been an extension. And in the hospital room, Heavenly Father, and everybody's home to go ahead and just making them well, Heavenly Father. Because we know you're still, still, Lord, in the healing business, Heavenly Father. So we just thank you so much for being that healer, for sending your son, Jesus, Heavenly Father. Just like you did for the centurion that you do it for us. Heavenly Father, you are, you, you just, you're a lawyer in the courtroom, Heavenly Father. You're a doctor in the, in the hospital, Heavenly Father. You are all of that in a bag of chips, Heavenly Father. Everything comes along with it. For you are the Alpha and you are the Omega, Heavenly Father. You bless us from the top of our head to all the way down to not to just the sole of our feet, all the way to our big toe, Heavenly Father. You're there and you're there for us, oh dear God. So we just say thank you. We say hallelujah again, Heavenly Father, for being so much for us, Heavenly Father. We come today on this first anniversary thanking you, Lord, for all you've done. And what you're about to do as we care for this ministry. There's nobody like you, Heavenly Father. Your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways are not our ways. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for being who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the congregation say amen. 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 And amen. amen. Let's give God some praise. Come on up, praise. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Awesome God, we serve together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On this first anniversary of Heaven Hand Ministry, we'd like to take time to welcome each and every one and thank you for coming out. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. 
Thank you, Pastor. It is certainly an honor to be here today. If, if you can refer to as I read, um, sometimes you know, like people yourself and just read to you when you can read it yourself. But I, I go through this real quickly. Um, but some of the young people, the words may be, a lot of the words may, may be a little too big for you, right? So I'm going to read it to you, okay? But I humble beginnings. And if you look at your, um, your book right on the back, humble beginnings is we do the history of a helping hands ministry, Christian <coughs> fellowship. And um, it, it took me about two months to even get the name right, wasn't it, Lee? <laughs> and I get up here and I be all over the place with the name. So, so even now, so it, even now I'm the mainstay. But if, if you could refer to your bulletins and, and you can look at the back of the bulletin, humble beginnings. A helping hand ministries Christian fellowship is the church ministry of the helping hand ministries of Augusta Inc. Doctor. W.R. Brain, Pastor Ray, starting an online Bible study each Sunday at 9 o'clock on Facebook on May 26, 2019. When Pastor Ray felt that in-person um, fellowship was relative, relatively safe from the adverse consequences of, COVID of the COVID-19 virus, and after being led by the Holy Spirit, the church held its first inaugural in-person worship service on Father's Day, June 20th, and that's a typo. That should be 20, not 2012, 20, <laughs> 21. No, you can read it three or four and five times and still miss it. <laughs> At the pastor's, Pastor Ray's personal residence, I heard, um, you know, Sister Chris say amen because she didn't know how to do that. You can miss it. <laughs> pastor Ray presided over the first board meeting immediately after the church was incorporated I got it right this time, in June 2021. On August 1st, June 2021, Melvin Smith and Johnny McKinney in the back with the ha ha ha, that was Johnny McKinney, were installed and ordained respectfully as deacons during the worship service at Stratford Subdivision Clubhouse in Evans, Georgia, where five members also joined the church during the call to discipleship. Hallelujah. Two more members joined in September September 2021. In September 2021, God blessed the church with an opportunity to lease a building at 3003 Peach Orchard Road in Augusta, Georgia. After lots of sweat, and I didn't put enough locks in there, did I, Pastor? No, no, no. I mean, indeed, you know, not enough. Lots of sweat. Lots of sweat. In negotiations with, with the owner, the church heard its first worship service at its new and current location on October 10th, 2021. Let's say amen and give God some praise now. That was a huge milestone. And deep even with his back, getting on top of the roof. <laughs> and it was hot that day too. On the roof. And I'm not going to tell you his age, but you know, he may be the oldest one in here. Listen. But he did it. That's what God, he got that gift. The church, church has first fifth Sunday Outreach Love Feast on October 31st, 2021, the same one with several friends and family joined. Joined the church members to break bread after the worship service. The church has hosted a love feast every fifth Sunday there, ever since. And we still invite all of you to come out on fifth Sunday as we, we, we have our love feast. As chronicled above, God has blessed the church as we celebrate the first anniversary. All are always welcome. Pastor Ray may be reached by his email at Raycon17. You see his email address and on his cell number. But we just thank God for giving us the opportunity. It's all God. Again, let's give God some praise. And this, I got church, we got church vision. And, and the reason I'll read from here and just realize this too, the words will cut off um, on the vision. So I'm just going to give you an overview of the vision. This church and congregation, and this is the pastor's vision, this church and congregation will become a place that welcomes and seeks those whose lives are broken, fragmented due to their separation from God. Have any of you ever been separated from God? Let me raise my hand. As a matter of fact, let me raise both hands. And we could hear the bridge that gap. His focus, my focus, will be the healing and restoration of lost souls as they are integrated into the local church body 
that will lead us to get involved in various programs and ministries. You see, ministries is in the name. Ministries is, is in the name. This will be a driving force from a variety of outreach efforts such as feeding the homeless, visiting nursing homes, and clothing the homeless. Growth is inevitable. 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 Okay. And in our excitement, I believe it will attract other believers who want to join in making the vision and a reality. So everybody say amen for that. Amen. amen. Dropping down next paragraph, a church can and must be prepared to grow, and God wants his church to grow. So, and, and, and going on, believers should also expect the church to grow, and when the church is not growing, its pastors and members need to take a hard look at reasons for non-growth. In order for a helping hands ministry to go, grow, we must understand what God said. I'm building, I am building my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Therefore, we cannot operate in fear, doubt, selfishness, envy, and complacency. Each member is encouraged to provide input and ensure everyone is on board to move the ministry forward. And I'm not going to read Habakkuk, but read, make it plain. Write the vision down and make it plain. That's what pastor has done. Make it plain. For it will not tarry. Tarry means being late. And, and we can see as the first anniversary is right on time. Hallelujah. Going down... Uh, what we want to do to accomplish the leaders first, okay, first, we have a big task, and the first thing is to consider it's more of a permanent place of location. We're part halfway there here. Second is spiritual growth. And thirdly is serving the community. So we got to have a place, we got to have spiritual growth, and we want to serve the community. Amen. And so that's a synopsis of, 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 um, of the church vision. You can read it um, when you get an opportunity. It's, it's also in the bulletin, although it's cut off. So we thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to be here today and for being here for our first anniversary. And with that being said, we have Pastor come back up for his, his, for his comments. And we got a, a slight change in the program today where after the pastor speaks, then we have another musical lection and selection, and then we have the introduction of the speaker. Amen. Uh, thank you, uh, Deacon Smith. Uh, some may say, uh, hey, you like talking, don't you? <laughs> but, but really, uh, I don't, you know, I do like talking. Because communication is the best way that we could reach people. Uh, what, the, what Deacon Smith shared about this ministry is that we definitely want to be a ministry that reaches out into the community. And I just want to take the time and, and say, I got some friends here. Uh, if you want to introduce yourself, uh, please do. And I got some friends here. Uh, I'm not going to steal her thunder, but uh, we go back to a ministry back in, uh, I think, 1980, 81. And she uh, she came to the visit. And, but I'd like to give anyone an opportunity to, to um, to stand up and, and introduce themselves. And, and look at this. Uh, my friend just walked in, and, and I got a friend, uh, Cedric. Yes, good morning, I, Pastor. I talked to you this morning. <laughs> when we talked, I was, you where said, was I? You, I don't know where you were at. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Cedric, I don't know. I was, I was talking about Donald. Donald, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to give you a chance to say something, but Cedric, uh, we went to pharmacy school together back in, in 1979. Boy, look at you. My brother. Yeah. My brother. Yeah, you surprised me, didn't you? Well, you know, I'm a practical joker, you know. Yeah, you are. one thing about me. You know that well. Oh, boy. My heart is... My heart. <laughs> I, may, I may start crying here. <laughs> anyway. That's what it's all about. So that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Josephine over here, she she uh, she walked forward last week and enjoyed the church. That's ministry. That's what we're talking about. That's why we're here. And and I don't promote a church. And I said that earlier. I promote relationship with God. And it's so important that we develop a relationship with the Father the Son, and 
with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so that's what we're about. So when you, when they said on their pastor's comments, the only thing I can say right now is welcome and thank you for being here to celebrate our, our first anniversary. And I will have some closing remarks uh, later on. So anyone that want to stand up and say a few words, uh, that's the opportunity. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good, good, good. If God has been good to you, and I mean all the time, can oh, you give oh. him a hand clap of praise? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you know, as I said before, and as the pastor alluded to, we go way back. So far back, I don't want to take you back that far. <laughs> but one thing about me, and the pastor can tell you, I'm a practical joker. I like to make you think you lean in one way, and I hit you with another. Uh-oh. And uh, I like to do that for my friends in a very positive and godly way. Yes. So anytime I can have an opportunity to be in the presence of the pastor, Pastor Brains, it's always an uplifting feeling in my heart. As a matter of fact, way back in the day, he approached me with ideas about Christianity and forming a relationship with the Lord generally. Remember Jim Lee? Yeah, yeah. oh, what does Jim Lee mean? Jesus and me loves you. And he introduced me to that term and also pointed out the fact that I needed to develop a strong relationship with the Lord. And over time, with our friendship and the focus on the Lord, it became a reality to me that the most important thing that can happen to any individual is developing that intimate relationship with the Lord. And you know you got it. You know you got it when that little voice started directing you from right to wrong. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what the one that people talk about, that little voice. So I just want to thank you all for having us here today, along with my wife, Regina. Yes. Regina Snell, I'm Cedric Snell. And we're just looking forward to being a helping hand to a helping hand. Thank you, Cedric. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, I'm the new member. Amen. 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 Well, when I came here the first time, and I'm like, I want to have church, and I've been at the church ever since. Amen. 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 That's so wonderful. Well, that is, that is. And, and I'm going to say this, that you're going to get paid twice today. Okay, uh, we got some, uh, some some words that we're going to be fit with, and then after that we have some hors d'oeuvres. They, they said they're heavy hors d'oeuvres. I, I don't know the difference between heavy hors d'oeuvres and light hors d'oeuvres, but there's still the food. <laughs> so we will have some food after after we get finished up, uh, getting fed with the word. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. That, that, that broke me down. I don't know about y'all. That, that really broke me down. But uh, I want to give honor to God. Y'all, y'all have a seat. Please have a seat. Uh, I want to give honor to God who's truly ahead of my life. And uh, would you just give God a hand clap for prayer? And we can just shout Happy Father's Day to God first. Yeah. Happy Father's Day, baby. You know, I'm I'm honored and privileged to be up here. And uh been knowing Pastor Ray for a short minute. And uh before I get started, I just I just want to put something out there right quick before I even bring the word. I didn't know how God was gonna do it, but he says now's the time. My son just introduced me, and that just blew me away. It ain't the first time one of my sons have introduced me, but this was special because this is Father's Day. Mm. And so I was reminded by God himself. How would it be if you introduced people that didn't know God as your father? Mm. 
If you, if you would say, hey, I'd like to uh, introduce my father to you. Oh, yeah, they call him God. I just want to let you know what he is to me. He's my Abba. He's daddy. He's the king of kings. He's everything I ever think. My daddy got some stuff in his house. God Almighty, you got to come see it. Yeah. <laughs> my, God, my daddy will protect you, me, and everybody you know. Y'all you, you, don't feel me. Mm. My daddy is awesome. And when you start treating God that way, mm -hmm. God is God's trying to get you to do something different now. To trust him more as a father than as a God. See, I, I, I remind, I see some children out there. Uh, if a father is standing in front of his child and tells his child to jump, if that child trusts him as a father, mm -hmm. he's going to jump knowing daddy, come on somebody, yeah. daddy's going to catch him. Yeah. 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 It's something about when daddy catch you. Your cousin can catch you. Your uncle can catch you. But nobody can catch you. Like daddy can catch you. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching all you shots. Yeah. When it comes to God being daddy, you, yeah. you start saying, Daddy, I want you to do this. Daddy don't mind you doing stuff. But just include him. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Right. Somebody give daddy a hand clap of praise. Yeah. 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 Amen, amen, amen. I had, to, I had to put that out there, Doc. I oh, yeah. couldn't hold that back in. Oh, yeah. So today's message, well, excuse me, let me go ahead and do, uh, give honor to Bonner and Duke. First of all, I want to give honor to uh, Helping Hands Ministry Christian Fellowship. Did I get that right? Uh, uh, and Pastor Ray and First Lady uh, Cheryl Ray. Man, they did a, they, they're doing an outstanding job. They're shaking ground like never before. Now, uh, I, I know that I'm seeing this, this section like this here. But for some reason, God said, not so. What you see right now is just the beginning. The ending is going to blow you away. Uh, Y'all can go ahead and start taking pictures of a bigger church. Come on, somebody. Amen. You start taking pictures. Because see, if God can't get you to see it, he won't get you to say it. Therefore, you won't have it. Oh, my God. So he got to get you to see it first. That's why he said, write the vision, make a plan that he may run, that read it. Why? It ain't God that needs to be recognized by the vision, it's you. Amen. I, I, I feel my help coming on. Uh, I, I think it's God, I got to loosen up a little bit. I got to loosen up again. I got to get my, shake myself off. And, and, and so give an honor to the leaders and the congregation, the members of, of uh, how you do it? The members of the, the, the members of Heaven Hands Ministry Christian Fellowship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I can get that thing, Doctor. Yeah, and, 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 uh, yeah. and, and so you just want to give honor to whom honor is due. And I want to give honor to uh, all those visitors that, who, who saw it not to be robbery to come here today. I, I, I'm hoping that you come and get what you expected. Now I got a question: Did you expect anything when you came through the door? Amen. Amen. Because if you expect nothing, you're going to get nothing. But if you expect something, you're going to get what you expected. Somebody give some up. Amen. Yeah, amen, amen, amen. And so I uh, also want to just give Proclaim the Word Only Ministries a, a, a shout out to my, my wife, Lady Robin, and uh, my son, Alan and Moses, and I got three more, uh, four more. I got so many children, I, got, I actually got to put them by numbers now. <laughs> my eight grandchildren, my great grand, you know, I, got, I got to put them all by numbers now. And, and so uh, we just want to thank God for you and uh, thank God for the Facebook fans. Uh, they are. They, uh, there's something else, right? yeah, yeah. a good something else. Uh -huh. You know, we're getting uh, quite a few uh, responses, and uh, very grateful and very humble. Amen. Now, uh, today, okay, now, now I can go ahead and stop. Now, go ahead and get started. Yeah. Some of y'all saying, "Hey, I'm ready to go now. I'm ready to eat? Get some eating on right now, right?" Okay, so I want to make sure I do this the right way. Today is actually the church's first anniversary, right? That's right. Uh, first means there's more to come. That's right. Um, they said today is Juneteenth. Uh, if you know anything about Juneteenth history, um, I, I had to look that thing up again. Uh, because, see, January 1st, 19, I mean, 1863, they were actually, it was uh, the, the proclamation was actually signed. It was actually signed. But for two and a half years, two and a half years, the people that were free, come on, somebody, didn't even know they were free. So, so Juneteenth started in Texas. June 19th was the day they looked like, hey, guess what? You ain't slaves no more. <laughs> so in other words, what I found out by reading uh, Deacon Melvin was two and a half years, they got some extra free labor. Because <laughs> no one knew. So they, that's the first time they had learned that they were free. Okay, so um, then uh, uh, <laughs> the main thing is, is, is happy fathers, fathers thing. Yeah, so yeah. I got to take time out to say happy fathers to this house, yeah. all those fathers out there. Yeah. Uh, if everyone who is not a father would please stand up and, and just give a hand clap of praise for those who are fathers. If, you, if, you're not a, if you're not a father, 
that we stand up. We do not want it. And that, that, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Thank, thank, thank you so much. We just we got to give honor to our honors, too. Now, uh, I, I realized this weekend I was looking at some stuff, and I found three people in my path that had birthdays during this weekend. And I said, my God, my first and only classmate, excuse me, roommate in college, 1982, his birthday was Friday. Then a good apostle friend of mine, his name is Merrill Morgan out of Virginia. Then I got a good apostle friend of mine in North Carolina, we call him Carolina preaching. His birthday was Saturday. Then uh, my spiritual father, Apostle John Irvin, his birthday is today. So we got the whole weekend covered. Somebody give my hand clap of praise. <laughs> the whole weekend is covered. Now, now, now y'all said, okay, you, you've been up there long enough. Okay, got it. Today's message is titled, uh, Don't Get Rid of Your Father. And the subtitle is, A Father's Love. So if you would bow with me in a word of prayer. I'm coming from 1 Corinthians 4.15 and Luke, the 11th chapter and 25 through 32 verse. If you would just uh, stand on your feet, please, if you're able. If you're not, just, just sit there. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 4.15 states, For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you have not many fathers. For in Christ I have begotten you through the gospel. Now, uh, Luke 11, 25 through 32 is uh, kind of long, so I'm going to kind of shorten up a little bit. Now, I, I give it to you. I think I can get it to you real quick. Now, now his elder son was in the field, and he came and drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing, and he called out to one of the servants. Somebody said he called out to one of the servants. Oh, and he asked for these things. Well, what these things meant? And they said unto him, Hey, thy brother has come, thy father has killed a fatty calf, because he has received his, his, him safe and sound. And the brother, he said, and he was angry and would not go in. Good God Almighty. The, therefore came the father out and entreated him and answered him, saying, Father, he said, Father, lo, this many years uh, I did serve you. Somebody said, I served him. Yes, Neither transgressed. And he said, and at, the, at the time of thy commandments, and he said, and, and, and my friends, you know, <laughs> He said, that, yeah, you never gave me a kid that I might make marry with my friends. Oh, they call that jealousy in my, my day. <laughs> and he said, but soon as thy son come, which have devoured, uh-oh, uh, 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 devoured our living with Herod, uh, thou, uh, thou hast killed him, the fatty calf, and said unto him, son, thou art ever with me. He said, son, thou art ever with me. All that I have is yours. He said, it, it, it was meet for me to meet and make merry and be glad. For this, thy brother was dead, and he's alive, and it was lost, and now he's fine. Amen. And Lord, had a blessing to the readers here that do it through the word. Short prayer, and we can go ahead and get started. That work? Amen. You ready, right? Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I do glorify you, magnify your name, truly you're worthy. Ooh. Ask me anything in me to hinder this prayer from going forward. Take it out right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, I yield to you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Speak to me, through me, and for me. That the people of faith will not look question the wisdom of man, but in the power of you, Father. I think this is a time of you, a time of celebration. Therefore, I give you praise, and I get out the way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. 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 Y'all have a seat, please. Have a seat. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm reminded that when it comes to God, he's no respecter of person, but he does respect your faith. And when, it, when, when it, I looked at the message for uh, the first anniversary, it says, moving towards God's glory, glorious plan, and excellent vision. And I, I, I said, wow. Sometimes we don't look at that in, in, the, in the sense that we should give it. But what a special day for, and a special celebration. You got all three of them in one day. Y'all got Juneteenth, y'all got the, the anniversary, and you got the Father's Day. Y'all greedy. <laughs> y'all couldn't just give me one or two of them. Y'all greedy. <laughs> so <laughs> when I think about how God does things, I gotta sit back and say something, say something right quick. God's names reveal his character. All his names reveal his character. But God took me somewhere that I had not been, I had not been before. Pastor Ray took me somewhere I had not been before. So I had to say, Lord, can you repeat that? So I, I haven't been able to sleep hardly, uh, getting up early, and, 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 and can't, it just can't shake it. He says, son, there are, ing there are ingredients to me. I said, ingredients, I'm thinking about a cake or something, you know, or something I can make up. You know, I'm thinking about something I can eat. He said, no, there are ingredients to me. He said, son, he said, think about it. He said, my name is revealed in my character, but what I have for you, some of some of these ingredients, not all of them, but some of them are directly into you. He said, I handcrafted you. 
So these ingredients that I have for me, you can use them. Everybody can't use what Pastor Ray, come on somebody. Everybody can't use what Pastor Ray has. Why? Because those are not your ingredients. See, God's ingredients are separated from each individual, yet we're all one in them. And so I thought, he said, one of the ingredients is the fruit of the Spirit, son. And I said, oh my God. He said, so when you think about the fruit of the Spirit, the first thing the fruit of the Spirit starts off with is love. And he started telling you about long-suffering, goodness, meekness, uh, goodness, temperance. He started giving you all the things that involve the fruit of the Spirit. Notice he didn't say fruits of the Spirit. He said fruit of the Spirit. So therefore, when we, when we, know, we, love, when we know that we love other folks, but we, we operate in the fruit of the Spirit. What, what, does that mean you're perfect? No, it just means that you're blameless. Can I tell you a little secret? Go ahead. If you become perfect, you won't stay here long enough. You won't be here too long. Why? Because there's no way a perfect, perfect person can stay in an imperfect world. It, it, it'll be too much. It'll, it'll, it'll pressure you down so much that you wouldn't be able to handle it. Because you're the only one perfect. Notice Jesus was the only one that was perfect. And, we, and he had to leave himself because what? He got to hang out with imperfect people. Somebody give God some praise. But, but then he said, one of my other ingredients is agape love. My God, my God. That love that's unconditional. That love that surpasses all knowledge. That love that makes you say, man, Lord, why do you love me? Mm -hmm. That love that says there ain't no height, no depth, no nothing. No danger. See, nothing can stop me from the love of you. Nothing can stop me from loving you. Meaning this here, that regardless of what you've done in the past, and what you may do tomorrow or today, God will not stop loving you. But hey, guess what? The title is, don't get rid of the Father, right? So don't get rid of God. God doesn't get rid of you. He says the gifts and the calls are irrevocable or without the repentance. Meaning this here. You can give it back to him when it's time for you to go to heaven. Say, Lord, I got these gifts. I just didn't do nothing with them. And he'll, and he'll take them then, but he's not going to take them while you're here. Y'all looking at me strange. Because why? His, his greatest has compassion and mercy. Why? He said, new, he said my compassion and mercy are new every day. Great is thy faithfulness. That means every day they knew. Stop trying, to use, stop trying to use yesterday's compassion and mercy for today. They don't work on today. God, because you serve, serve an ever-present God. So he's, he's always present to it, not past to it. Don't you notice every time God gives me to do something for you, somebody in your past, negative past, come up and bother you? Yeah, yeah, I remember mean, you used to. Let me stop. I'm, 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 I'm going to say this here. Someone introduced me as a pastor. I can't, you know, hopefully if they hear it, they, they know that it didn't bother me. They introduced me as a pastor. I come in, I say, how you doing, pastor? You know, can you pray for us? A pastor, would you like to have a beer? <laughs> in the same sentence, pastor, would you like a beer? I'm like, well, said, well no, not this time. <laughs> <laughs> not this time, you know. <laughs> so so Brian looked at me, the husband looked at me, Pastor Red said, what did you just ask him? <laughs> you know, I said, no, not, not this time. Yeah. Because, see, I could also, I could get holy on you, right? right. I'm Pastor Johnny Williams. I don't drink. I haven't had a drink in 25 years. So please don't ever offer me a drink again. Yeah. But no, no, no. It's simple. Hey, all I got to do is say no. Yeah. The enemy going to offer it to you. All you got to do is say no. He's going to offer it to you. All you got to do is say no. So he ain't got no control over you. Yeah. So yeah. I don't have an issue with somebody drinking a brewski. Yeah. I don't want one. <laughs> then, I, then I told the person, look, at this your house. Yeah. Don't change nothing because of me. Yeah. I thank you for the respect, but don't change because of me. Why? Because... I got God's ingredients inside of me. I know my father's ingredients. Why? How do I know this? See, Jesus went into the Pharisees' house, and they said a woman came and had some issues, but like none of us do. And they said uh, she she was dry. She wiped his feet, dried him, put some water on, did what he wanted, anointed him, and appointed him for, for, for the time that was coming. But yet Jesus had compassion. So they said there was a lady that came up there. She was called in. Uh, doing a, doing some things. I got the children. I got to keep it jig jig. Yeah. <laughs> Called him doing some things, but then he kept the guy. Then he kept the guy that was with him. He got up and ran, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, and so they, they brought him to Jesus. Jesus had compassion. They said, hey, what does Moses law say? Stone him, right? He said, okay, all right. You know, I, I heard what you said. So uh, one, 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 one of you guys that's perfect, yeah. ain't got no sin, yeah. why don't y'all cast the first stone? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to sit down and wait for y'all. Yeah. Because see, what, in, essence, in essence, they knew that the only one that could stone the woman was Jesus. Right. So they put the pressure on Jesus. Start writing down stuff in the dirt. Some woman told me, a prophet told me that he was actually writing their names down. And each time he wrote their names down, they got up and left. <laughs> so he said, hey, where are you accused of that? But see, here's what people miss sometimes. It's Father's Day. The Father loves you, but he don't want you to keep doing the same thing over and over again. He wants you to grow up and mature from it. So just because you care for you, you don't, don't give a reason to do it all the time. But when, it, when she got up, when she got up, first lady, 
Perfectly shaved. She got up and said, he, he got up. She said, she's still standing. He said, what? He said, where you accused of that? He said, look, but I don't accuse you either. But then he tells her to go, but he says something that people leave out. Go, but sin no more. Yeah. See, he don't say go and get ready for some more. He yeah. said, go and sin no more. Yeah. We misinterpret that. And, so, and then the other one is, he's all in his ingredients, his protection. My God, my God. My, he got that protection to the point where we can act just like Joe, like, like, like J-Bass did. He said, Joe, J-Bass said, Lord, be my personal for God. He said, first of all, he said, bless me first now. Yeah. Now, now, now leave that out now. Now, now. Come on now, stay with me. He said, I want a large tract of land. I want all this stuff, but bless me first. But hey, one person said, God, I want you to be my personal bodyguard. Now, I, I had to go look at that thing again. Uh, uh, son, Adam, I had to go look at it again. Why? Because see, he already gives his angels charge over you. He already, the angels already encamp around you. But God says, if you ask me, I'll keep you the one to come step up here. Isn't it funny that when I was growing up, they used to say, that's, that's Johnny boy. Now, my daddy wasn't no, he, he wasn't standing up here. He, he wasn't no joke now. now he, he was definitely still on you. you know, if he had to hit you for the back, he'd do it. Because he wasn't going to leave. He wasn't going to lose. But he told me something that'll keep me alive. He said, boy, if you can't beat him, run. <laughs> so sometimes all I got to do is I'm going to tell my daddy. He said, boy, but if you can't beat him, run. So boy, don't stand up and take that whooping like that. What's wrong with you? If you're able to run, run. He said, well, why, he said, why do you think I ain't never lost? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, that's why I thought you didn't lose because you fight good. <laughs> but then, but, but when you think about it, God, here's the other ingredients. I want to leave with the screen. The other ingredients is God never changes. He's the same today as he was yesterday. But he never changed. He said, what? I'm, I'm, I'm the Lord thy God. I change not. So he don't change like we change. And so, and so when it comes to this ingredients, he said, some, some of us have a tendency to pick and choose what ingredients we want God yeah. to do. Yeah. He, even though he said, I, I got yours separated, but I want to dig in somebody else's cave. Yeah. But that cross tastes a little bit better than mine. Come on, somebody. Wow. And, and so God said, uh, in other words, can I get this out right quick? Please follow the thing. Why not just mind your own business? <laughs> That's a little cut. Why don't you just mind your own business? Mm. I mean, it's plain and simple. What? If you will use what God has for you, you'll see that it's far greater than what you can ever see. Oh, my God, my God. Man, and so, so I'm, I'm reminded, I ain't got nobody shouting on that one. Okay. I'm reminded that a few days ago, I had a relative, I don't call her name, I should know it when it comes through. Uh, she called me a pimp and a wimp. I said, what, what'd you just call me? But I didn't get upset. She said, you a pimp and a wimp. I said, oh, okay, all right, I was six, three, three, two, sixty. Pimp, maybe wimp, uh-uh. But then she said, yes, you are. And I said, well, yes, I am. Why? Because P, I, P to the I to the M to the P means praise is my passion. Uh, 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 w to the I, uh, uh, y'all, praise is my passion. Yeah. W to the I uh, to the M to the P. Worship is my priority. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Praise is my passion, but worship is my priority. He said it worship him, but worship in spirit and in truth. That's right. So I got to tell the truth about it. I know y'all thought, I, I knew it was something. I looked at that clothing. I knew, I knew he was something. I knew he wasn't no bad. I knew he wasn't no real. <laughs> and then I, I, I uh, you said, what, son? You told me to take him back to the garden. God the Father loved us so much that the first Adam messed it up, but the last Adam got it right. The last, the first Adam was of spirit, and, and, and God had to breathe into him, but that, so that, that second Adam, or the last Adam, was of a spiritual, of a heavenly. He's from heaven. If you want to look that up, that's 1 Corinthians 15, 45 through 50. But I'm just telling you. So God loved us so much. Remember, Jesus said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. Yeah. How was it lost? In other words, even though Adam gave his stuff away, Jesus said, I, I, I'm taking back everything you stole and then some. Mm -hmm. See, God don't just take back one of your houses. He takes all your houses back. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy has no, no business touching nothing of you. Right. And, 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 so, and so when I look at how God did it, God had me rolling this morning. <laughs> we talked about God loves us so much that he, here he is sending his only begotten son to the earth, yeah. an imperfect world. So I, he knew they weren't going to like it. I ain't said nothing about love. I said they didn't even like it. They got mad when he told them the truth. Yeah. And here's the, here's the funny thing. Don't that sound like some of us? Because oh, yeah. they told me the truth hurts. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, if it felt good, you accept the truth. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to know the truth, ask one of them children about it. Oh, yeah. 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 That dog, he be like, yeah, hey, that dude, that dude, dark skin, he's six three. He got a big head, big forehead. I said, look, no, not, not that much truth, son. <laughs> not, not that much. But, but then I heard God say, he said, I sent my only begotten son. Remember, he said, for God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. You know, so, but, he, but we got to believe on him, trust in him to get the, to get the fullness of him. But he sends his only begotten son, and he comes to earth. Not only comes, but he has a task of dying, having people spit on him, pulling his beards off, carrying his own cross after he beat down. I watched that movie, Passion, uh, Passion. I almost wanted to go beat the director. This man don't hit him no more. But then I had to understand, then this man is naked in front of his mama and relatives. That's a shame. That means he endured the cross, despised the shame for the joy that was set upon him. But then I'm, I'm looking, I said, come on, Lord, talk to me. He said, Not, and Jesus stayed on the cross. No folks spitting on it, no folks talking smack. Hey, get off of there, you, you can do that. Get, get, you get all that other stuff, get off there. Yeah. Now, even the folks, the greedy folks, you know the ones that he took a fish sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He took two fish and five loaves of bread, fed 5,000, took the same thing, yeah. uh, seven loaves of bread, 4,000. There must have been 9,000 greedy people. Here's the good thing. He only counted the men, so there's some greedy women out there too. His followers that y'all eating too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they helped him. Get away! And so when I thought about that thing, I thought about it. In order for for us to be reconnected with God, He had to send His Son to die for us, that we become His Son's brother and become joint heir with Him. But then we become God's. Come on, somebody. Yeah, we become God's sons. Why? Because now we're connected to him. Yeah. Jesus came and did a reconnect. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen, amen, amen. amen. With, 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 with God, can I, can I, I'm, I'm wrapping it on down. Y'all like, oh, oh, y'all ready? Yeah, I know y'all ready. Y'all ready to eat? <laughs> but somebody said, no, I, I can't do that. I'm, I'm obedient. You see, my father, who is called I Am, yeah. he's the source that provides the resources. Yeah. Did y'all notice that I hadn't heard God say not one time, ooh, ooh the economy is going real bad. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that gas high. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I ain't heard him say that. He, he says, I, I, I will, my, he said, each joint supply, that's what we're talking about, but he said, I'll supply all your needs according to your riches and growing in Christ Jesus. He said, everything you need, so if you need gas, God, I need some gas. God, I say it louder. God, now, let me tell you one thing. God ain't going to let the people do without. And, and then and they told me that my father's a doctor. That means that he goes, he, he's that Jehovah Rapha, the God of heal, but he's also a doctor. Uh, Deacon Melvin, do I have a witness? Uh, do I have a witness there? Uh, 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 yes, sir. What's the name, Deacon Johnny? Yeah. So, so he's, he'll make sure you get healed. The doctor can't heal you. He can diagnose you, but he can't heal you. That's right. My God. My dad is also a lawyer. Uh, he, we, we always win. Uh, can I tell you a secret? I had a relative. Called me up. Was facing 84 months in prison. Call me up. Said, Uncle. So you know it's a rap. Uncle. Uh, yeah. I know I ain't called you in a in a minute. Uh, but can you pray for me? I gotta go to the court thing today. I need prayers. So so if I'm not mistaken, I, I think I, I asked you for prayer. I called somebody that's gonna pray with me, not against me. We prayed together for uh huh. Her sentence got reduced, y'all feel from 84 months to seven months. And they put it in minimal confinement. The doctor said, the, the, the lawyer said, I don't know how this happened. You got, you got that right. Because see, last I heard, the father I served yeah. said he touched the heart of the king yeah. and turned again in which way he pleased. Yeah, right. My God, my God. Yeah. My father is an ever-present help yeah. in a time of trouble or need. Yeah. My, I'm talking about he'll make a way out of nowhere. Come on, somebody. Uh, my, my father, that, that guy that I call dad in armor, it's the best investor that I can ever deal with. Why? Because he gives me 10%. I give him 10%, he gives me 90%. But yet his 10% is more than my 90%. Come on, somebody. His 10% is more than my 90%. Man, man. But my father, my, my father, he wants to be more than a one-night stand to you. Not, not call him when you just need him. Most folks won't call Jesus, but they'll call somebody that knows Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> they won't call Jesus, but, but they won't, they'll call somebody that know him, though. They're like, look at, hey, I, I, I know my prayer going to hit the ceiling and bounce back. I'll get off me. Get off me. You know, I know it's going to happen. 
But let me call somebody I know. Hey, hey uh, uh, Rev, I know that I ain't been in church in like eight months. But the Lord told me to call you. Stop lying on God. <laughs> he didn't tell you to call. You just got convicted, which is a good thing because he's out there for no condemnation of them that believe. What happens is the enemy gets you by yourself and con causes you to condemn yourself. God, the, the pastor said, oh, I'm, I'm glad you called. You got to make up nothing. <laughs> then he says, I want to be more than, and hey, Dad, this is the only time I get to call you once a year. Father's Day. I, I, you know, blowing my phone up. He, he had 11 other months too. I mean, no, that's for somebody that's out there. But he, he wants you to call him when you're not just looking for a job. Yeah, I just got fired, man. I don't know what I'm gonna do. He, he wants you to call him uh, uh, when you're broke, busted, and disgusted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, then God said, his father said, I want y'all to start saying this here. I'm above and never beneath. I never lack. I don't have no slack. He wants you to start saying, look here, I'm the lender and not the borrower. So you gotta speak that thing to the atmosphere for daddy to operate on what you say. You say, look, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves me. Woo. Jesus did it all so I can walk in all. Come on, somebody. <laughs> my God, my God. Somebody say, I love my father. I love my father. Somebody say, I love my father. I love my father. Now, for real, for real, though, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to do this here. I, 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 I read the product of Son many times. You can go back and look at it. It's Luke 15, chapter, verse 11 through 32. Yeah. The whole story. I read it many times. But it's this time it got me. Because I, I had a picture on my computer. And God says, print it out. I printed it out. I showed it to Pastor Ray. He's the only one I showed it to. The picture shows the product of father. You, got, you don't have a product of son. You got to have a product of father, too. Even though the product of me, he left and came back. But the, the dad was waiting on his son. Yeah. And he said, he saw him from a distance. He'd already rehearsed everything he was going to do. Yeah. Saw him from a distance. Open his arms out, yeah. both arms out to welcome him. See, when you open both arms out, y'all know them, them uh, North Carolina hugs? <laughs> you know, not the real hugs. The, the, the real, y'all looking at me crazy, y'all know who the real hug is? The, the pre-pandemic hug. <laughs> and, and, and so he hugged him. Then when he gave him a coat and he gave him a ring, the ring was a, was a symbolization of a, a remarriage. It means we reunited, we connected. It means that what you thought you lost, now that's lost because I can't give you another inheritance, but I can give you something else. He said, Lord, make me a servant. He's he saying, make me a servant. He said, boy, you're still my son. But then God twisted that thing around. He said, the, 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 the brother hater was with the elder. He was hating on his brother. He said, I, why didn't they give me nothing? First of all, he never asked. You know, the, the fatty cow was happy that the elder was there. Because was that a young brother? He'd have been two days after the other older one left. He went, what, what? Y'all cooking me already? But, but your brother just left. We celebrate. There you go. I eat all his food now. But they said the brother was mad. He said, man, what you mad about? You should be happy. But then I'm, I'm going fast forward again. Here you go. The, the, the father didn't mention nothing about the, about the, uh, the, the youngest. The brother brought it up. He done blew all his money that you gave him. Yeah. I still got you. In fact, the brother, the elder brother, while his son, or while the younger brother was gone, everything that came in was his. Yeah. So he got his brother, his younger brother stuff too. But then I said, oh my God. But the, I'm looking at how he welcomes him in. And then God said, look at the elder brother one more time. I thought he was mad for some reason, but then God said, he's mad because he never went from a servant to a son. He was always telling me, I served you all these years. Yeah. God wants us to go from servant to sons and daughters. Because yeah. that way you'll trust yeah. them even more. Yeah. With that being said, I'm out of time, and I thank you for yours. Yeah. A father's love.
was on my way here this morning, riding up the highway, I was, I was singing the song, This Is The Day. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. It's amazing um, uh, some of the things that we sing when we were by ourselves, but I sing uh -oh. all the things too. <laughs> but uh, that's what I was singing this morning. And you know, God is, God is so good in our prayer because I was uh, in, in New Mexico last week. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about pilots not showing up and That's right. canceling flights. And, and guess what? I got affected by that. I was supposed to fly in on these Friday night and be here early Saturday morning. <laughs> and I get to the airport and uh, no flight. So you're not leaving until Saturday. Saturday night, you're going to get here early Sunday morning. <laughs> and then they said, uh, well, you can go as far as Atlanta, but there's no, no flight that can take you to Augusta. And I'm going to call in Groom and, and all these other transportation people to see and how can I get from Atlanta to Augusta. And I was talking to this lady, and this is part of that, that, that father's love. And I said, well, you know what, I'm having uh, my, I said, I'm a pastor. I don't know why I said that. I'm talking to her. I'm a pastor. I said, this is my church anniversary is tomorrow. And she said, well, let me see what I can do for you. Come on, God. Come on. And so she said, I'm going to talk to my supervisor. Mm. And so she said, go, go sit over there. So I said, okay. I'll follow instructions. I sat over there. And then she came to me 15 minutes later. She said, we got you a seat. Mm. And uh, we're going to let you go all the way through. Oh, <laughs> my. And she said, when you get to, uh, from New Mexico, Albuquerque to Atlanta, she gave me a, a ticket, I wish I had brought it, and it had on there, special standby. <laughs> wow. I've, never, I've never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I got off the plane, and I was uh, at one gate, and I had to, I was like O.J. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go all the way through another gate. And, and when I got there, <laughs> They were, already, they were already loaded to play. Mm. This is at 11 o'clock last night. Mm. And the guy said, don't run. He saw me coming. <laughs> he stopped me. <laughs> don't run. He said, are you Willie? That's what they call me. <laughs> said, are you Willie Bray? <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> he said, uh, we got a seat for you. Amen. Amen. Special Amen. Amen. to get in the way and try to prevent and hinder things from happening. God has a plan. So it was meant for me to be here. But you know what, if I knew my buddy Cedric was coming in from Atlanta, I'd have called Cedric and said, Cedric, can I ride with you in the morning? Anyway, uh, we made it. We made it. I got home about 1 o'clock uh, last night or this morning. God was good. Yeah. God is good. And, and you know what, I want to just thank everybody again for, for participating, uh, whether you're live or, or Liberex. Uh, thank you for, for participating. And, and, and you know what, just come again. Come again. Uh, I don't have a, a bulletin, so I don't know what's coming after I get through the speaking of it. Uh, I just sometimes just roll with the, roll with the flow. But, uh, give an opportunity to uh, for call the discipleship. And I, I kind of alluded to that earlier, that a call to discipleship isn't so you can join a club, so you can know uh, I belong to Triple A, or <laughs> like the lady asked me, she asked me at the hotel, she said, do you, because I had to spend an extra night in the hotel, and I needed to find out who was paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the company that, that I'm with, they said I'm looking for covering. The lady asked me, no hotel room. You know why? Because they canceled those flights and there's no place to stay. So guess what happened? Y'all know what happened, right? I said, I said, I'm a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled out, out my, my I didn't pull out my car. In conversation. And she said, uh, uh, 
Uh, are you uh, a member of Triple R, what is it, AARP? Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, they sent me something in the mail. <laughs> and she said, let me see what I can do for you. So she put me on hold and she came back and she said, uh, oh yeah, we, we got a Bible room. But before that, I said, if you don't have a room, I said, can I work tonight? Because I, I work at the front desk, I just need a place to stay. <laughs> came back and she said, uh, we have a room for you. And I said, you know what I asked next, right? Said, well, how much is going to cost? Because this was a high, one of those high uh, end hotels. And uh, she said, I said, uh, how much is it going to cost? And she said, $140. I said, oh, well, that's within my per diem rate. So I said, I'll take it. And uh, that was with the, the AARP, just now. Okay. But God is good. Amen. God is good. So I had a place to stay. Was, was comfortable for the night. And I'm so here. And guess what? You're here too. And so this is like a, a call to discipleship, not just to be part of an AARP, because that's not going to get me anywhere, but to be a part of what God wants to do. So I want to give opportunity for you to, to come and be a part of this. And, and you say, well, uh, I, I got a church, and that's fine, but sometimes we just need prayer. And you can come forward if you need prayer. See, that's what we're all about when we talk about helping hands ministry is, is reaching out and helping each other. And when we learn that, you know, we learn how to help each other. We don't just grow up knowing how to help. You know, when we're young like this, we learn how to help and how to, to reach out. And so now we're practicing that so we can go ahead and help now. And so if you need some, some help, come forward. If you need some prayer, come forward. If you'd like to be part of this ministry, because guess what? As the bread said, we, this is the first. We're going to have many more. Right. Thank you. Thank you for pronouncing that. Explaining that. And, and, and guess what? And, and, and this ministry is proclaim the word only. And, and I, I love that because it's, it's confessing that every time he said that we're proclaiming the word only. And that's what we do. And, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your, your message today. So if you want to come forward, uh, join the church. Call the discipleship. Uh, need some prayer. Now is the time. Jesus is my doctor, and he writes out all of my scriptures. No, he, he gives me all of my medicine in my that you are very close and that you are 
help her, help them, and show them who you are. And as we join our faith with hers, Lord, I pray, God, that you will minister to this family, minister to her family, God, and give them what they have need of. That's right. And we thank you. Thank Jesus. you. In Jesus' name. Church. Generously, but also reach. Each man should give 
Continue blessing mm -hmm. as we go forth mm -hmm. to reach out, touch to touch, yes, touch it, reach to reach it. It's in Jesus' name we yes, pray. Amen. 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 Magnify your name truly worthy. Father, thank you for the word that came forth. I'm here and unchecked by the force of Father. Here is here heart to believe. Father, I thank you for traveling grace for anybody who's not able to stay right now. I think that you were angels with a camp about them, watching over them every place they go, Father. Thank you for so many people coming here today that thought about robbery to come be with you today, Father. So we give you the highest praise of hallelujah, Father. Now, Father, I think that the food that we're about to eat, Father, that we will receive is excellent, Father. I think that the food is delicious. And, Father, I just want to glorify you for it, Father. And let no hurt on day come to anybody that eats this food. The spiritual food has been given, now the natural food is restored. 
In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh-oh. Amen. 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 Amen.